Welcome back to another Black Hat Python video. Let's just take a moment here to go over what we're about to do because we have gotten into the really cool and interesting part of the book, a part that I've been really itching to get at uh, for a while now. We have gone beyond all the basic networking stuff. You know, feel free to refer to uh, the previous videos in the series if you want to catch up, as always. Uh, and I'll drop them at the end of the video so you can uh, check out that playlist. But uh, yeah, suffice it to say, we have gone through all the networking and uh, doing some web hackery, you know, like brute forcing subdirectories, you know, logins, web logins, creating burp extensions, all of that stuff. Now we have finally come to some of the real hacker stuff here, the super hackery stuff. We are going to be creating our own Trojan and uh, command and control framework using Python and GitHub to actually push the updates to these boxes and to actually store configuration information on all of our zombie machines and you know do all the command and control. And... Um, you can use a number of different things. Now, hackers have gotten very creative in the past about what they used as the to facilitate their command and control. Uh, IRC has been used before. Even Twitter has been used before. It's something the book brought to my attention. Uh, but the authors of uh, Black Hat Python had chose to use GitHub, and it's a bit of a newer way to do it in a very creative way. And essentially, you can make use of the fact that all of your commands are going to be encrypted because GitHub, you know, sends its stuff over an encrypted channel, you know, HTTPS, right? So what we'll be doing is creating a, a private repository. And the reason that I want to talk this through is there's a lot going on in this section that you just need to kind of understand rather than just throwing a bunch of code at you and trying to explain what we're trying to do, what's going on, and trying to make sense of the code. We're going to step through this first, right? So basically... We're going to create a Trojan that uh, we can deploy the agent on, you know, multiple boxes by any means. You know, maybe let's say for the sake of scenario, maybe we use some uh, social engineering or something like that to get some uh, a user to install the malware on their machine. It's going to have these configuration files that it's going to get from GitHub to know uh basically is going to build it out by running certain commands that will get the configuration of that target machine. And that way we can know what we're dealing with and we can have it run certain commands, get certain bits of information. And there's so much room to expand a tool like this. And they even say that in the book as a challenge, try to add more functionality to it. And even in the coming chapters, we're going to be learning about different features that we can, you know, up to us, we can add this onto our Trojan that we're going to create in this chapter so we can keep expanding on this and then even get a little bit creative with it. I think we could have some fun even as a community. Uh, if you guys have any cool ideas, start getting those ideas going in your in your brain, right? Write them down in the comments section and uh, at any point in the video and any of these videos, you know, I'll review them and see maybe, maybe you have a really cool idea of how we can expand this. But for now, it's going to be pretty simple just because we want to get a working kind of proof of a minimum viable product, if you will. So how are we going to actually do this, right? We are going to start by creating a private repository in GitHub, right? We don't want it to be publicly viewable. So we want to be stealthy enough as attackers here. Now, of course, GitHub, the company, will have access to it. So don't do this for anything illegal, any illegal purposes, because if the government comes and knocks on the door of um, of GitHub, right? They're going to they're going to be able to access your private repository and turn over the information to them. So by all means, use this responsibly, right? But um, yeah, we'll have our private repository on there and uh, we're going to create a number of files. We're going to do some coding in this video. I just want to explain this first. Now, this is extremely, why am I so excited about this, right? Well, the reason I'm so excited about these sections are this is extremely practical, real world type of stuff that we're diving into now. The other stuff was practical as well. Uh, very practical. That's why I'm really enjoying this book so far. But uh, yeah, you want to talk about something that's very much on the rise, like try to try to keep up with some security news for a few days without hearing the terms malware, ransomware, things like that, right? We could turn this into ransomware down the line. I just thought of that. That might have been, that might be something cool is to like 
turn this tool into uh, something that can encrypt files, encrypt file systems, and maybe propagate through a network and run this on uh, some VMs in a, in a test environment, a test network, and basically encrypt the entire network with uh, ransomware that we created on our, like in our uh, virtual box. That would be a pretty interesting thing to do, right? I'm just throwing some ideas out there. Uh, feel free to brainstorm as well down in the comments section. But uh, yes, we have a number of things we could do here. But let's just get started setting up GitHub, the private repository and stuff. That's something I've already done. I've created the repository already. Um, but now I need to create everything on the on the Kali box and things like that. So let's get right into that. So here we are inside of our VM. I have went ahead and created this folder here, BHP Trojan, and I've also created a repository of the same name on my GitHub as a private repo, like I mentioned earlier. So we're going to initialize this as a Git repository. This is basic Git here. A lot of you guys probably know how to do this. If not, well, I'm about to show you. So the way we're going to start this is by doing a Git init to initialize this as a Git repository. And uh, that will create some hidden files here, or one hidden folder, I should say. Um, and then we'll make their... And we're going to make a directory called modules, a directory called config, and a directory called data. And then we're going to create a file called git ignore, which allows us to ignore some files from being pushed to uh, our repository. And uh, then we're just going to go ahead and add all these for commit, stage them for commit. And then we're going to actually write our commit, which will push it. Like once we push it, it will write it to the, uh, the git repository for us. So we could say adds repo structure for Trojan. That is what we'll go with. And uh, there you go. We could always run a git status to see. Well, I guess you run that before you run commit. It would tell you what was being staged for uh, the commit. Here it also tells us what's staged for commit after we run the commit itself. And so we can uh, add our origin, which will be our GitHub URL. And then once we've done that, we'll do a uh, git push on the origin, on the origin called master, on the master branch. And there we go. So now we'll, if we go to GitHub, we'll see that it is there. Now, basically the reason we created these folders here is we're going to use the config directory um, for a unique configuration files for each Trojan. So each Trojan is going to have its own config file. It will be specific to that uh, technology, like that uh, operating system and all that stuff, right? And uh, as we deploy each one, we're going to want to perform a different task on each, uh, on each one pretty much. So that's why we, another reason why we want the configuration file. And so for modules, it's like uh, we're going to use it for modular code, right? For libraries, things like that, that we want the Trojan to be able to pick up and run. So any any of the code that we'd want to run on multiple ones, we could just create that as a module, put it in modules. And there's a cool Python hack that they, uh, I don't know if they discovered it or not, but uh, they utilize it. And uh, yeah, so that part will be really interesting once we get there. So another thing that we're going to want to do is install through pip uh, a module called github3.py. So let me make this larger for you guys at home here. At least temporarily, right? And uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, well, let me do a pip3 install on that actually because we we're going to be using Python 3 here. And uh, yeah, there we go. That should be a good size for everyone. So we've ran all these commands here, right? We've pushed to GitHub. We've got the skeleton here. The next thing we're going to want to do is create some of our modules actually. And we'll go ahead and print off the string uh, in Durlister module. That way we know that w which module we're in for debugging. And then we will do a, uh, well before we return I believe we're going to want to do a little bit of logic here. So we'll do files variable equal to os.lister and that way we can actually just list the directory and we'll typecast this into a string and uh, yeah that's all we're going to have for these modules here so now what we can do and you want to do this every time my super coders in here will know that when you're working on a project you, 
make your changes, then you stage them for commit, you push them to GitHub. And that way you can make use of Git's version control, uh, which is really handy. But uh, yeah, if you guys aren't familiar, we're about to do that right now. So we just say git add current directory. It will add everything in the current directory. You can run a git status to see what's about to be changed. So we see here that um, we have two files here that are going to be added, Duralister and environment. And uh, then from here, we can just uh, do a git commit dash M and then a, a comment. So we'll say my commit. Typically, you would say, like, whatever change you made, like, added the database or fixed bug in whatever as your comment. But in this case, I'm just going to write whatever. And uh, from there, we can do a git push origin master. Since this is not the first time doing this, this is all we have to run, and it will push it for us. So if we, would, if we were to go to our GitHub right now, we would see that that file is there, or both of those files are there, I should say and everything is well. So hopefully this was a good starting point. This video is getting kind of long. This is definitely going to be a two-parter. So go ahead and check out. Um, hopefully by the time you watch this, the next video will be out and you guys can get right into that. If it's not, then go ahead and check out the playlist on screen right now, the Black Hat Python, if you want to catch up in the meantime. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.